So I'm making this video for a customer who uh, comes into the deli where I work and they're a big music fan and they play a guitar um, and one of the favourite songs is um, I Want You To Want Me by Paul Brady um, and they wish they, they just wish they could play it but they couldn't figure it out um, and we got chatting about it and the main the main issue they were having was that um, they didn't know what the tuning was to start with um, and obviously it's no good trying to work out chord shapes if if you if you don't even, if you don't even know what what you're supposed to be tuning your guitar to um, so I said I'd have a listen and see if I could figure it out uh, which I have um, so but a little bit about the song itself um, the keys that it's, that it's dealing with and, and things like that um, the actual in standard tuning um, just to show you what the chords actually are and what key it's in or mode um, it starts out with a with a sort of a D sus four kind of sound, um, and then it passes through A and goes to um, E major, an E major chord. Um, so what this does, it, it gives the song. It's not so much attention. That's, we we have we use that word a lot in music, um, but it's a little bit more nuanced than the idea of tension. It's more, uh, it's, it gives it a kind of floatingness, um, a suspension. It's like we're never quite on solid ground in terms of a of a home chord. Um, but if we were to consider it a home card or come up with a home card, we would we would say that it, it, it is the the E major because that's in terms of resolution that's ma mainly where we're resolving. of well I would I would say if I had to define the key I would say we're, we're actually in the, the mode of, of, of e mixolydian so we're not we're not strictly in the in the key of, of we're not strictly in a key we're in a mode really we're in we're in e mixolydian mode it's very reminiscent of um, this could be the last time by the Rolling Stones um, it's like we're landing on that E major we're using that E major as, as, as our home base that kind of thing but to truly resolve in, in the most conventional way we would eventually aim for the A major <coughs> um, so yeah those are the chords that we're dealing with for the um, for what we might call the chorus it's more of a bridge I suppose um, he uses a couple of other chords um, he uses a G add 9 which in terms of voicing in standard tuning we would, we would play in this kind of way putting that A in there um, so we've got a G major with, a, with, a, with an added A um, to a, an E minor 9 uh, proper so we've got the 7 in there, we've got a minor 3rd yeah, so yeah, 
cards so those are mainly the cards that he's using um but he's not playing it in standard tuning he's playing it in a different tuning so just to talk a little bit about transcribing and how we approach particularly approach transcript transcribing songs that are in alternate tunings obviously the first part of call is what is the tuning so a little tip about that um, the first thing to to check um, is you might as well make sure that the um, open tuning isn't the actual key of the song um, you know so plenty of examples of songs in open tunings where the tuning is the, the key of the song that makes it if you're going to do a process of elimination then get that one out of the way first is it is it in the key of the song the actual tuning um, so an example of that would be um, just off the top of my head uh, Soldier of Love by Robert Plant. It's a song that's in a, in open C, and the, and, but the song is, is in the key of C. Um, a lot of songs that are in open G will be in the key of G. Um, but yeah, so you check that first. Figure out, have a listen to the song. Figure out what key the song is in, if, and then. Chat, try whatever open tune you know there are different variations of open C if, if it's in C then um, try a few of those to see if you can get those voicings if you can get the right voicings um, <clears throat> this one isn't though so the, the rule that rule doesn't apply so we need to um, eliminate that idea so then it's like oh then we're in no man's land, how do we figure it out? So the next thing is, use all the resources at your disposal. Um, this is quite an obscure song in the sense that it's not particularly well known. There aren't any um, covers of it on YouTube or anything like that. If you go on Paul Brady's website, he doesn't give the, the tunings like for example, we get on John Martin's website who used a lot of open tunings. There's a list of the tunings that are used for his songs. Um, so yeah, use all your all the resources at your disposal. Luckily, there is a, a video on YouTube of Paul Brady playing this live. And what we find is, and this is what we're really looking for if we're trying to find out what the, the open tuning is of a song. Um, is is there any point in the song where the artist literally just hits all the open strings either in passing or in resolution or anything like that um, I transcribed a song by Joey Landreth um, called Better Now um, and I was only able to figure out what key he was playing the song in by his very last strum stroke of the strings at the very end of the video because he actually pretty much goes through every string so um, but Paul Brady in this song does it quite often as particularly in the live version rhythmically the live versions are a little bit different to the uh, the album version the recorded version um, but when he's going through the strings is using that's is, is that passing card that a card that I demonstrated on the way through to E major um, <clears throat> now I've also in the past transcribed Arthur McBride by Paul Brady and um, that key is in traditional open G tuning uh, that song sorry is in traditional open G tuning um, and this is just the other thing I wanted to say about transcribing and in using all the resources available to you as well you actually have to use your own historical knowledge of, of an artist 
themselves of their approach of, of you have to in a way try and put yourself in their shoes so that you can understand how they think. Um, I've got a student at the moment who is a big Blair fan and um, it takes me a bit longer to transcribe some of the some of the Blair songs for him because I never I, I, I do like Blair a lot and I do like a lot of the of Blair's songs but Graham Coxon's approach is is quite unique and original and and it's and in, and in that sense it's quite alien to me um, and I find it very difficult to put myself in the mindset of Graham Cox and in how he's approaching certain certain songs ideas um, but if we Paul Brady we could probably define as a folk artist and the the, the open G tuning is a very popular tuning in folk music so we know that we know that he played Arthur McBride in Open G um, also when you watch the live video he is he has got a cap on for it too and when he's hitting the open strings he's passing through that A chord well a cap on for it too um, a whole turn up a whole turn which is raising everything by a whole turn to a or a whole turn down from a is g the only thing then well then we then we check it out so we tune to open g we try it something's not still not quite right when you listen to the album version just for starters there's this much lower sounding note so we might think, well, that, that isn't in traditional open G tuning. So we might think, then we have to check, is that a bass part that's being that's been layered? Or has he dropped his 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 sixth string even lower? Um so then I check the live version again against that, and um sure enough, that low sounding root note or bass note is he's producing that live as well so we we have to assume we know then that um it's not just straightforward open g he's he's dropped his sixth string even lower um so <coughs> um what we end up with is c on the sixth string um and then We've dropped our A string to a G note. Then we're getting a standard D and a G and a B and then um, true to open G tuning we've dropped the first string down to D. So then when we put the cap on fret 2 we get this. So then um, just finally general tips in open tuning itself what open tunings tend to do when we Unfortunately, because of the way that a guitar is tuned in standard tuning, our way of looking at the fingerboard and our understanding of intervals become quite compartmentalised. They don't tie together very well. We don't... Beginner to intermediate guitarists tend not to look at the fretboard in the same way that a pianist would look at a piano keyboard in terms of if these are the relationships between the notes that are mapped out in front of me then I can use certain shapes across the board in order to cycle through the, the chords of a scale so um, open tunings 
give us that perspective. They give us that idea. Um, so if you then map out your root and third relationships. Um, you can see that it's much more like playing the piano. Um, that often lends itself to open shapes within the tuning being much more movable as well, which is going to be important. Um, in understanding the little fills and, and uh, nuanced fills that we're going to put in between some of these chords and moving around. Um, so now I'm going to speak in terms of sort of more standard chord shapes, but in this key. If we make what we would think of as a kind of A sus shape, I've got like a sus2 here, um, or, or a sus4, or I can move through the minor. Um, this is what's giving us this starting D major, D sus2 kind of. two on fret two um, of the sixth string. I've got finger three on fret two of the third string. Um, and Brady kind of, the first time he goes into this chord, uses it this way, and puts this uh, first finger on fret one of the second string. to the D, it uses the open again, but because of this idea of open tuning as well, we can also, we've got the option of just moving that shape up. he goes into it, it tends to use this more, more this sort of shape so I've got first finger fret two again you can you can flatten out on on these strings six five and four but grab this fourth fret of the intervals I need to shift these two together rather than being two frets apart just one fret apart to G at 9 and then to E minor 9 um, so the, the G at 9 is just we're just going to bar on what is fret 7 proper and then this E minor 9 um, Barring first finger, second fret, third finger's going on string four on fret three in relation to the capo fret three, and um, little finger is is going on to fret five in relation to the capo on the third string, 
and then I'm using my little finger to mute the B string or the second string and then um, I'm getting string one there's that version of it but also there's another version of it where same thing here but I'm just going to flatten out all three of those strings one, two and three on that fret so we've got two options there do that or I can do And that's pretty much in terms of the approach, the ideas, the tuning, the progressions, the key, the mode, and the shapes. That's pretty much everything there is to the song. So, um, 